Hey, welcome everyone. Today I want to share with you a quick story on a network diag that I did on this 2007 Mazda 3 2.3 liter four cylinder in here with the automatic transmission. Uh, this is just going to be more of a story than anything. Try to help you guys avoid a pitfall where I wasted about 30 to 45 minutes on this vehicle. So I want to share that with you so you don't run into the same problem. So let's start with the customer complaint. The vehicle came into me on the back of a flatbed, transmission locked in some sort of limp mode, probably like third gear, uh, dash is lit up with the AT light, the shifter position does not illuminate like it's supposed to, and if we go ahead and pull codes, you're going to see we have a, a, a U0101 lack of comm to the TCM. Now when we pull codes, anytime we're dealing with any sort of network failure, or really anytime we pull codes at all guys, we should be doing a full on code scan. That full code scan is going to give us a look inside of all of the modules. So you can see as we look through here, we have the U0101 lack of comm to the TCM. Stored in the ABS module, we actually have a vehicle network fault. We also have an ABS CAN network fault. Uh, warning indicator requested inside of the uh, instrument cluster. And then uh, 101 inside of the instrument cluster as well for the TCM. So. The customers actually asked me not to look at the ABS problem at this point. Let's figure out the TCM problem first, get this vehicle drivable again, because right now it is far from drivable. It's incredibly harsh engage into reverse or drive. And then from there, you have to almost stamp the pedal down to the floor to get this thing to move because I believe it is stuck in third gear, though I have no data to be able to back that up. Because as you can see, if we go in to the TCM, into the transmission, you go codes, you go data, whatever it might be, and immediately we get a no communication is the key turned on. So what do we do first? We know we have a problem with the network. We know we have no comm with the TCM. What do you do first? In talking with the customer, he did say that the TCM on here was brand new. He bought one of those TCMs that you send them the VIN number, they program it, yada, yada, yada. He installed it, vehicle worked great for a day. One day, then it happened again. Back into limp mode. So. We don't know if the TCM is good or not. We don't know if the network is good or not. We don't know if the TCM is maybe simply missing power and ground. Who knows at this point, we have to go in and diagnose it. Let's take a look at the network map for this vehicle. So we'll just take a look at a wiring diagram. And you can see there's a lot of different modules on here with a lot of different wires. What we're looking for is who's connected to the TCM. That's really what our main concern is here. TCM, PCM, some sort of connector, a EHPAS module, which is electronic hydraulic power steering, ABS, uh, DSC hydraulic unit if equipped, the uh, DLC, data link connector, and then our instrument cluster. So let's go ahead and filter everything else out of there because we want to make this as clear as possible. And now you can see all that's left on this part of the CAN network. So if we look at this, we know that our PCM is functioning. We know we were able to pull a code of the PCM we can go in with the scan tool, we can pull data out of the PCM, that's perfectly functional. So that means our problem has to be, can't be D02 connector because that's what's giving the information to the PCM. Can't be any of these other modules, can't be the DLC. We can get rid of all of that and just focus on this spot right here. Can't be the wire between the PCM and this splice. It has to be either this splice right here or the wiring going to the TCM the TCM itself or power and ground at the TCM. That's all it can be. So we go from having a network that spans multiple feet on this car under the hood and under the dash inside the vehicle to now simply looking between the PCM and the TCM. Fortunately for us, they're all located right in this area right here. Very easy to get to once you pull the air box and the battery tray and the battery, all that out of the way. Now, what do we look at first? I'm, I was fingers crossed that this was going to be an actual network fault. So I went ahead and I went and looked at the CAN network first. You could check power and ground to the module first if you want, that's a fair test. It needs to get done anyway. But I went after the network first. Here was my initial uh, lab scope setup. Blue and red are at the TCM. Yellow and green are at the PCM. I went ahead and captured known good at the PCM to be able to take a look at the network. The blue trace right there has an issue. I know that the issue then has to be between where I just probed and that splice on the connector. So what I went ahead and did was I took a set of pair of back probes, put them into my jumper lead, and I jumped from the PCM 
to the TCM, so I bypassed all that wiring in between. The TCM comes online. The TCM functions normal by bypassing the wiring. All right, awesome, great. So I have to tear apart the harness on this car. Cool, all right, so let's start tearing it apart, right? I gotta get to that splice that's on there, on there and I gotta be able to figure out where my problem is in the wiring. Maybe high resistance, maybe some green fuzzies in that splice, you know, it's a Wisconsin car. It's uh, what, 13 years old. It's kind of rusty out on the outside. Maybe there's some green fuzzies in that splice that we'll find, who knows? Start tearing the harness apart, get to the splice. Looks beautiful. Doesn't look bad, no green fuzzies. So I check the network on either side of the splice. It's perfect on both sides. Oh no, why? Well, maybe my problem is between the splice and the connector for the TCM. So I start kind of probing the network in steps as I work back towards the connector. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's perfectly normal. All the way back to where I was back probed into the connector. When I installed my jumper lead between the PCM and the TCM, I pushed it right into the backside of the connector for that blue trace there, for that wire, which I believe was uh, blue and red. As I pushed that into there, I reconnected that, that pin between the female and the male, between the connector and the TCM. I remated those connectors together, or that, that single pin together, and suddenly everybody was happy and operational. I fixed the problem by installing my back probe when I did my jumper lead. I went ahead and installed piercing probes now. When I use my piercing probes, the network looks perfectly normal, no issues at all. This may have led me to then testing power and ground to the TCM, um, or maybe even condemning the TCM depending on where it went because our network was getting to the TCM itself, or at least so I thought, until I installed that back probe and kind of reseated that connector inside of there. The main failure here, guys, was the female pin and the male pin of the TCM. The female pin of the connector, male pin of the TCM weren't mating up properly. There was some pin tension issue in there and I had an intermittent connection. How do you know if that female terminal is bad inside of the connector if you don't get lucky when you uh, accidentally back probe and fix your problem? How do you know if it's bad? I like to use my kit that I picked up from AES Wave. I know we've shown this kit in the past. Uh, talk to Carlos at AES Wave um, and get yourself one of these kits because you can do pin tension with these as well. So I'm gonna take the pin that fits into the connector on here. All right, so Apparently I grabbed the wrong pin. As you can tell, it's not going in there. All right, so we gotta grab the right one. Don't force it or you can cause damage to the connector. Okay, we'll give this guy a shot. All right, so this one, there's just a slight amount of drag. I can feel it as it inserts that there's a slight amount of drag. This one, there's less drag. It's much easier. And again, this is just all feel at this point, slight amount of drag, feels nice and tight. This one, kind of loose. And if we look, those are our network wires right there. So our female terminal on there is toast. Simply by taking one of the uh, pinned uh, leads here out of this kit, we're able to kind of get a good idea that our connector is toast on this vehicle. So that's how you can quickly check to see if the female pins are bad when dealing with uh, connector failure like this. All right, so I hope you found this video useful. Learn from my uh, my little error in my ways here, save yourself the 30 to 45 minutes of tearing apart the harness like I did when you deal with something like this. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you click the little bell icon down there, you will get notified every time we put out a new video. I really appreciate you being there. Everybody stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe in these uh, crazy times that we're dealing with. Again, I appreciate you being there. Happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.